Hello and welcome to a mini episode of PredictoCast. I forgot to look up the thing that I say now on the new season. Welcome to our new format where we even we are flying by the seat of our pants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's what it is. Um, what I'm supposed to say is... Welcome to a mini episode of PredictoCast, the podcast where we predict the plot of a movie we know nothing about. That's the new way that we introduce these mini episodes. Uh, we're still fresh into it, into this new season. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't watch that ten minutes anymore, and we just sure we removed our our main gimmick, and thus we don't have anything to say here. But, but <laughs> we're still here. <laughs> we're still here. We're still is. trying to grab at relevancy after doing the show for five years <laughs> for five years five years so many movies that no one else will ever cover uh just like the one that we're going to cover <laughs> on the next episode i mean that's what that was the segue on this one <laughs> very good so i um i i brought this to this movie to the table because i saw a tweet uh, from uh, Allison Pregler. Uh, if you don't know her, she does uh, movie nights on um, on uh, YouTube, and she also does Bay Watching uh, and Bay Watching Nights, both very funny uh, YouTube video series where she goes through Bay Watch and Bay Watch Nights. They're hilarious. You should you should check those out. They're very funny. But she tweeted out um, back in June that the absolute classic Razor Sharp has been added to Amazon Prime and Tubi, and I definitely recommend it if you want a laugh. And she had the cover art there, and I was like, well, this is a show that we have to cover. Um, the movie is Razor Sharp. Sharp uh, has an E on the end, so I'm assuming that's our main character's name. <laughs> I hope Razor's his first name, like Razor Ramon. <laughs> it might be. I it it very well might be. Um, the cover that she tweeted out is, is kind of, I think, the main cover. Uh, it's uh, excellent. Um, it has uh, Razor Sharp. It says Troy Nicolo Ashford is Razor Sharp. Uh, the Z's in in the Z in Razor has like blades on the ends of it, so you know it I means mean, business. That, I mean, it, it it does if you look at it long enough and set. It, it, otherwise, it looks like Ra slash Or. <laughs> like it's some They're kind also, of like weird programming last language. Sharp looks like it is zebra patterned. <laughs> And they're really gilding the lily a bit because the P also has a knife blade at the end of it. I like in my head the sharp is done like Zubas. <laughs> it is. That oh nice, man, nice... you you might be right. <laughs> and th this is a cover where this guy, well, he is wearing baggy jeans in it, slightly baggy jeans. Um, this guy could wear Zubas in this movie. I would not be shocked. For sure. He's got on a vest. He's holding like a little short sword. Um, and uh, I don't he's, know he's if that's... such a way that he's actually flexing. Yeah, he is He is flexing while holding this sword. And he's kind of off small to the left-hand side. We've got some lightning and we've got like a big giant face. I don't know if that's his face. I don't know if that's the bad guy's face. With these piercing green eyes uh, looking down on the figure who's flexing with the sword. I don't know which one of these is Troy Nicolo Ashford. Uh, I don't know if this one of these is the bad guy, if they're both the same person, like one of those uh, school portraits where you have, you're you in the photo twice. Man, I could absolutely see some loser, I mean, some kid taking a, a school photo where one where he's holding a, a short sword backwards at himself, trying to flex, and then his <laughs> face looking up, the, up top, all grayscale except for his piercing eyes. And thinking like, man, I just showed the rest of my class that I'm actually tough. Yeah, while you were going to football games and having friends, I was studying the blade. I love that the head is shooting lightning out of its chin. <laughs> yeah. What if that's his body? What if he's made of lightning and those are like his arms and legs? You would put that in the title then. He'd be like Razor, razor Blast or Laser Strike. <laughs> There's a really great tagline on this in some... In some very cool grungy font that they found on defont.com, which says his vengeance is cutting edge. Which doesn't you make any sense. Is, 
that, that, that means like he's like he's, he's ahead of the curve on on vengeance like he's 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 <laughs> he's breaking the mold this is a guy who like he's watched some ted talk he's gonna do some ted talks about uh about vengeance that Are implies that he vengeance by the way probably i bet the i bet the crow gave a ted talk on <laughs> vengeance there's a there's a there's a uh, separate tagline some of the boxes have it says they betrayed him tried to kill him dot 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 red font big mistake <laughs> they kept me on the edge of my seat with that because I was like wait a minute I mean like was that a good idea no it's not <laughs> his his vengeance is cutting edge implies that he's getting revenge before the the thing that has happened to him. Or like immediately, like someone comes up and like fucking spills a coke on him, and he immediately stabs them. <laughs> I think this guy eats the edge pizza. <laughs> it's his favorite kind of pizza. <laughs> what was that? What know. was that pizza? But what was that? It was just all crust. It's it has yeah. Like it doesn't have the the handle. You know the place where you go to grab the pizza to eat the pizza. The part that like. Pizza with chains want you to think no one likes, so they tried to keep putting things on top for it inside of it. The edge has none of that. It's like an infinity pool, so it's an infinity pizza. Oh, that's right. I remember I remember uh uh that. Why do you think on your cover, the one that you found, why do you think he took off Troy at the in his name? Because it just says Niccolo Ashford on yours. <laughs> I think for certain markets they added Troy, just oh, to make him a so? little bit more American boy. I don't. I I, I will miss, maybe. I think a lot of this was was shot in Romania. <laughs> maybe it's very possible. I do like that on on the cover that I found. It says the most riveting independent action film of the year. That's that's of some high year. praise. <laughs> of, I mean, like, at this point of two thousand one, when we weren't it, busy uh, with other things. I mean, there was more. There was more riveting action that year than this movie in general. Um, <laughs> I, I would love to see if somebody. This was somebody's comfort food, as they loved to say back then, after that event, which we will never forget. Back when the Friends ratings exploded. <laughs> <laughs> we just wanted those friends back. <laughs> uh, so when you search for this on um, Amazon uh, Prime, where, where it's located, where you can watch it, uh, apparently you can also watch it on YouTube. Um, so there's no excuse for everyone listening to not watch Razor Sharp <laughs> along with us uh, before our episode next week. But when you look for it, it has... Uh, it, first, Amazon tries to stop you from watching this because when you spell it with, uh, we spell sharp with an E at the end, it says, did you mean razor sharp without an E? <laughs> it does not want you to watch this movie. Because you um, would. <laughs> it's like, are you fucking French? <laughs> this is Amazon.com, motherfucker. <laughs> it gives you a couple of options. Um, it gives you razor sharp from 2007 which is unavailable on Prime Video. And then it gives you Razor Sharp from 2001, which is available with your Prime membership. Great. I mean, like, you want options. Uh, you, want, <laughs> you want to be able to buy it by mistake, purchase it, and have it shipped to your house. I feel like this is probably one of those movies that you cannot find on, like, physical media anymore. Like, I feel like it's... If you go into, like, a random store, you might find it on VHS. Yeah, like, if you went to, like, a Small Lots. <laughs> yes, it's in Small yeah. Lots, for sure. I mean, th- this this is a movie that was, that was like, had to be uh, exclusively distributed through off-brand pharmacies, right? <laughs> you know what? I loved going to gas stations and... Uh, like like little convenience stores or or pharmacy places like that that had video sections like VHS tape sections that was always my favorite thing because it wasn't a video store so it felt like you were finding something different than you than you might find in a in a regular rental store which I know is is ludicrous because that's not how it worked but like it always just felt like you were finding something different 
I always like going into like stores that had like a selection of movies and then nothing else movie related, like a, like a, a discount store or stuff like that. And like you would find all these fucking Tom Selleck movies that you never knew existed and they would just be <laughs> packaged together. Yeah, those and those would be good if we ever decided to do like a Selleck September month or something like that. But that would be ludicrous because no one would listen to it. I mean, that would be it. a dumb idea. <laughs> No, I mean your your our viewership would our listenership would just crash and crater during a month like that. Yeah. Wow. Oh, uh, yeah. Like 2001, you're at the very like you're getting real close to not having a, a place for people to rent this shit at anymore. Like this 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 was went to a few video stores at that point, and like by 2005, like it's fucking ten cents as those stores closed, right? I, I, you know, I don't know because I did just do a quick eBay search for razor sharp VHS and let's take a guess on how much this is, is selling for on, uh, on eBay. Let's see. I'm going to go with, um, $7 and 50 cents. No, I'll give you one more guess. Higher. Which is my higher $25. Nope. (laughs) $69.99. Oh my god. The, the person selling this is the funniest person on the planet. It says 69.99 or best offer. So, I mean, my best offer would be $4.20 at that point. Yes. You could get it a little cheaper probably. Have you ever put a best offer in and had it uh not immediately denied? Let me tell you this, I've never bought anything off eBay. You've never bought anything off eBay. Have you ever have never. you ever looked at eBay and thought about buying something off eBay? I I have, but I've never, never gotten to the point of actually putting in a a offer on something. And yet, like I feel like the selection of eBay, if it was a store, would be completely up your alley. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure that I could get on there and spend hundreds of dollars on random garbage tapes that I would never be able to watch because I don't have the VCR. <laughs> <laughs> I no, I don't think I have a VCR. I had a VCR up to the last house, so I think we finally got rid of it at some point. So we had a bunch of Disney VHS tapes for the kid, and it was we no longer had anything to play on. I, I think we lost the remote for it and said, "Fuck it!" <laughs> like we're not, we're never getting up and walking across a room to fast forward in this shit anymore. I've always had the idea of like, oh, I'll buy a, I'll buy a cool like VHS to DVD thing and then I'll convert some tapes that I have because I have a few random tapes that I haven't gotten rid of just because I think that they might be a little rare and I've hung on to them in the hopes that maybe one day I'll get them converted but I just never have done it and then when you go look for those things now they're like $800 or something. I I love when technology you think you've kind of forgotten about but then think back like I could use that for my analog stuff but I want to get rid of it like I was looking at uh some pictures I had just physical pictures from the uh, early 2000s back when razor sharp was at the cutting edge uh and I thought fuck I, I want these in the cloud I, I'm just never gonna open this box anymore I bet like scanners are were so ubiquitous like i'm sure by now like a small scanner like a small scanner that would just fit pictures that can quickly run through that's got to be nothing because that we've moved past that technology so far nope 150 bucks yeah i just looked like, up- I, I could like they fucking were giving away scanners at one point like you bought like a fucking big mac and they're like you want a scanner with that shit i'm like <laughs> i had no place to put a scanner <laughs> I just looked up like uh, VCR to to DVD like recorder combo things, and uh, there is a Toshiba one on Amazon right now for a thousand dollars. I looked up an HDMI VHS one time, and it was unfucking believably expensive. But I mean, honestly, that is the only way to really see Razor Sharp. I mean, we're getting a bastardized version of watching this on Amazon Prime or or uh, YouTube or wherever. Yeah, they made this movie, so like all the color choices and all the set choices, you're supposed to see it with bad tracking and CRT blur, like the cold light of day. I mean, I'm gonna make a prediction here that this this Amazon uh, this Amazon version will be a shitty like version they just recorded off of a VHS tape. I hope so. I mean, I I don't need it at the level where if we put subtitles on, half of it says. Uh, unintelligible, <laughs> inaudible, or whatever the fuck that Australian movie 
inaudible. That was one of the worst uh, experiences. I'm going to make a prediction that we're going to get a lot of tracking a la Dr. Hackenstein, where that was clear. They just put a VHS tape in and recorded it. They saved. They they spent that sixty nine ninety nine and got that master that not master copy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, not not much on the IMDb here. Like, uh, we have been enjoying going through keywords for for things um, in this new season, but unfortunately, uh, nothing nothing on IMDb with keywords. So I have no idea what's going on in uh, this movie which is better that way it is uh though we do love that new segment which we've done one time um <laughs> recording wisely so far uh i do i did look up connection movie connections which is something i never really look up in a movie mm. um, where, where you see featured in or referenced in oh yeah uh, and this was referenced in uh the angry video game nerds shrek fairy tale freak down for game boy color <laughs> okay tv episode wow all uh, right. Part, the poster of this movie was seen on display of the Cinemassacre video store. All right. Well, there you um, go. That's a that's a thing that I haven't thought about it, in like a decade. <laughs> perfect. I mean, that means we're really we're really on the right track here. What do you think this movie is about? Is it about vengeance? Well, it is cutting edge, and as I already surmised, maybe he gets revenge early, um, like before he is even uh, wrongly. <laughs> well, he gets, uh, he is revenge even wronged. early. And often. <laughs> yeah. Um, man, I don't know because, like, I know, I mean, we l- literally know nothing about this. I don't know anything about this. I know he has a sword. He has a sword. He has cutting edge vengeance. It was a big mistake to cross him. Um, I do always enjoy when we cover a, a action movie where the star is both the director and the writer. Yeah, very exciting. The main character is going to have a lot of uh, no weaknesses, and it's going to be super cool. And it's going to be the everyone in the movie is going to love them, except for the bad guys. He, <laughs> do you think there's do you think there's going to be a a any any uh, one in this movie who's going to fall in love with him immediately? Like maybe six or seven people. Um, maybe. I mean, I assume yes, and I assume that we have to have. Uh, a whoever she is, she is in danger. Um, probably at some point in the film, like is is uh you know captured by one of the bad guys. Will they give her a last name? Ooh, uh, probably not. <laughs> uh, I I have to say, looking at the the full cast and crew, like yeah, he did everything. He is the director, the co writer, the star. Uh, he is a producer. He's did casting. Um, so he was involved in every aspect of this movie and as a result has directed only like one other film in that time. I mean, once you hit perfection and make the best independent action film of 2001, a year, a year will go down to infamy. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) and then you don't work again until 2018, uh, Thus signaling the in, the next incoming plague on humanity. Well, I think that was about the time that QAnon got really big, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that's great. Uh, I always do enjoy one of these movies where uh, their vengeance is over a killed loved one. And if you think about it, their vengeance, their vengeance in the movie only covers like a day and a half. But during that day and a half where they're trying to re- have vengeance on their, the death of a loved one, they get a new loved one. Oh yeah. So okay. All right. I like that idea that he maybe he um like someone dies and he's getting revenge, but he meets someone along the way that he falls in love with, even though like his wife just died or whatever. I mean, nothing's gonna top that one dog movie where <laughs> the entire family dies in a horrible accident. And the movie's about we gotta find you a new wife <laughs> immediately. <laughs> So it, it, okay, so he is he is razor sharp. Do you think that's like his code name, or is he like a is he a spy or a, like some sort of secret agent or something, or is that a nickname of his? Maybe like maybe his name is like Dave Sharp, but they everybody calls him Razor or like Ray Sharp, Raymond <laughs> Sharp, Raymond Sharp. Yes, Ray Zor Sharp. <laughs> 
Razor. His nickname is Zor. Oh, Razor. Like, that's got to be a nickname. Like, very few parents t- name their baby Razor. <laughs> well, now, you know, if I ever have a child, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Oh, uh, if I ever if I ever second child, if I have a boy child, like I I I wouldn't name them Dick Skinner. That's a bad name, but <laughs> Razor Skinner is pretty good. Razor Skinner is amazing. I I lost I've lost the chance. I lost the window to, to nickname myself Razor Skinner. Oh man, yeah. You think he's gonna work outside the law? I mean, almost assuredly, yes, he will work outside the law. Do we think that if he is some sort of law enforcement uh, professional? Um, do you think that his, he's going to have a boss who's mad at him? I think so. But also I really don't want more police officers learning how to learning the blade. Studying That's the true. Blade, yeah. That would be pretty, that would be pretty bad. <laughs> we don't need cops with swords. It's amazing. We always have these cops who have, who know karate yeah. and know how to use swords. And instead in real life, they're, they're meatheads who are, who are D plus students who know how to put on a lot of, uh, armor and run at you with a stick <laughs> yeah just imagine if they had a sword instead of a stick what if he's the mayor of the city oh i mayor like that. razor sharp <laughs> he's, a, he's a real he's a real mike hagar from final <laughs> fight he'll take you down but he's also the mayor oh i like that i i i think it's very seldom that you see action movies where like the lead is is in charge of something. Usually they're the underdog and they kind of like are, are, you know, trying to work their way up to the main bad guy and take out all the corruption. But what if we start with Razor Sharp as the mayor of the city and he has to get revenge on a, a political rival? <laughs> with the sword. Who smears him with like a, a video of him with a sex worker or buying drugs off someone? <laughs> so, like They have like a, a commercial or like, Ray, Mayor Razor Sharp promised to cut taxes, <laughs> but when it came time, dude, he was dull. I love that <laughs> though. Weak. A guy running for mayor, and he's got a blade, and he just keeps he keeps having his aides hold out a a, a big banner that says taxes on it, and he's just slashing through it. That or you like runs a discount store, and he's just cutting down prices left and right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come down to sell furniture. Come down to Sharp Mart, where we cut prices whoosh, in half. Like this sectional? Don't like sectionals? Slice. <laughs> now it's two couches. <laughs> Bad credit? No credit? No problem. We'll cut you a deal here at Razor Sharps. <laughs> yes. I, that's what I need now. I don't even need this as a movie. I just need this to manifest into reality. God, there's there's got to be a there's got to be a place in like just outside Detroit in 1985 that had like a guy doing commercials for furniture where and he, he was, has a sword. Yes, and he's wearing a karate gi and he's just slashing through things, <laughs> slashing through prices, furniture, yes. the crew. It's it's. <laughs> the crew and then he goes to jail <laughs> tragedy struck on That's today uh, at today at sharp mart uh where they were filming a commercial and uh ray sharp just got out of hand <laughs> raven sharp is a name of a guy who runs a discount store i'm gonna look it up i'm gonna look up raymond sharp he, he cuts he cuts out the middle middleman quite literally <laughs> Um, all right, Raymond Sharp. Uh, let's see. I found his obituary. Oh, good. Let's see how many times it mentions the blade. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of um, lots of Raymond Sharps apparently. F Sharp. It's a good. <laughs> He's a F Sharp. He, <laughs> Raymond F Sharp. He plays the piano. He both cuts and sings. He's. His blade is pitch perfect. Yeah, he um, looks like this Raymond Sharp passed away back in 2005. So it uh, doesn't appear that I hope he, you guys revenge back only four years earlier. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't seem like there's anything here about the about him learning the blade or cutting prices in half. So that's a little disappointing. <laughs> you really have to like, I mean, I didn't follow my last name into any sort of uh, 
employment, but I mean, it's good when you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I want nothing more now than razor sharp to be about a guy cutting down prices literally. And he has to take out some gangs who've moved into the area or who mess up his store or something like that's all I want now. I mean that like they, they come into his store and they, they push over some cans. It's a very, it, it's, you know, they come in, they're shooting up his ice, his ice machine <laughs> that he just paid the last installment on. Yes. And he's like, no, I see. <laughs> and then they don't know what, they don't know what hit them because then he pulls out the blade and they have to, they have <laughs> to up. deal with that. I, I, in my, in my head, he walks to, he walks down to the blade section of his store. <laughs> <laughs> he just grabs one. Maybe two. The the blade section of his store is set up like the uh, adult section in the video store. It's behind like the beaded curtain. When you go back there, you have to be an adult to go back there. <laughs> so it's a barbed wire curtain. <laughs> you got to earn your way in. Yes. Ugh. If you had a sword, you could kind of push it to the side. <laughs> so if this movie yourself. is not about this guy <laughs> cutting prices in half... And stopping some some street gangs. I'm going to be very disappointed. I mean, we have often set ourselves up for disappointment. And I think we have here as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but I think we've written a better vengeance movie than... Uh, I mean, if, if, okay, if we, if we release our version of Razor Sharp 2001, a year where nothing else happened, <laughs> we would at least have upwards of the top five independent action films of that year. I mean, I think you're totally right. Um, I also think that this is the perfect place to wrap up this mini episode because I don't think we can go any higher than Ray Sharp's Sharp Sofa or Sharp Mart. Um, and uh, I'm excited to dive into this thing. I love a good, um, I love a good action movie. I love a good, uh, you know, independent action movie because <laughs> inevitably they do things that you shouldn't do, probably, and that are maybe not safe. Uh, but they're gonna try it anyway. Uh, so I'm, I'm very, I'm very much looking forward to this. Yeah, I'm excited to. I'm excited that this has some credentials for being stupid and funny. Um, which you want? Yes. Um, I, I. I I'm always curious to people who watch these and go like, that was an awesome, exciting, uh, blood pumping, rollicking time. I took that at complete, complete face value and just enjoyed it. Um, I want to meet those people and I want to hang out with them and I want to give them meals because they'll like everything I cook for them. <laughs> um, but until next week, when we are talking about Razor Sharp here on PredictoCast, I've been Josh. I've been Skinner. And we predict you'll join us. Slash. If you like the show, subscribe, rate, and review us over at Apple Podcasts. We're on Twitter and Instagram at PredictoCast, and you can find our entire back catalog at PredictoCast.com. Our theme music is by Kyle Sledge. Find more of his work at SoundCloud.com slash geist music as always thanks for listening